Hey guys, Chris Jones here with the world's worst fishing. Welcome back. Hadn't made a video uh, a video in a few weeks, so um, I'm excited to be back in the fish cave. Today we're going to continue the series, Popular Colors, and we're going to do one of the most old, tried and true worm colors. Uh, I think culprit or man's or somebody like that probably started it way back 50 60 years ago red shad you know it's the two-tone laminate you have like the red pearl um, on top of the black and so we're going to do that today we're going to make red shad we're going to make a bunch of worms and uh, i've never made this color before so it's going to be fun to uh see what we can come up with thanks again for watching Okay, so first step is to measure out your plastic. I have a cup of each here. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna mix up our black. Sorry, the lighting's a little bright. The sun's starting to set. So I want this to be super, super thick. So I am going to lay on the black. I don't want hardly any transparency at all in a red shad or any shad laminate, so to speak. Now the next side, the red side, is a little more involved. So we're going to take a red pearl and then we're going to take some actual red color and blend them so that we get a really, really nice fire engine red color, but yet it's still pearl. So we're just gonna add some of this cherry red here. It literally looks like blood, kinda creepy. Okay, next is the most important part in red shad because the red side is a pearl color. So we have this nice red pearl powder. So I've never used this. So we're just gonna measure out a nice big scoop here. All right, and then why not? A little more for good measure. We'll see what that gets. Again, I don't want transparency here. Most red shad, if I'm gonna try to make it uh, like the big manufacturers, it's a very thick color. Both sides are very thick. There's a lot of contrast. Um, they don't really blend together much. So we're gonna stir them up and see what we get. <laughs> One thing to remember when you're using pearls, the powder will try and clump together um, well, I can't really get, like, trying to fish out a clump right now. It'll kind of clump up like that. So you really need to stir a lot. Um, you know, it, it kind of kind of requires a lot of stirring, probably more than you want to do. Uh, but it's a necessary evil for sure. Okay, so black's looking nice and thick. Don't think we'll have any trouble there. So we're going to keep stirring up this red side. And I think we're about done with that. That looks nice and thick. And it looks nice and red. Okay, next is the all-important heat stabilizer. So we're gonna add a little bit here. Don't really need heat stabilizer for black. Uh, it pretty much doesn't matter how much you cook it. You can't scorch it. It doesn't change colors. Um, it, it, you know, it, I mean, yeah, you can burn it and it'll turn a little bit yellow, um, but you don't have to be all that careful with black. That's why, you know, any color, black or blue flake, any any laminate with black, um, I mean, it's just, it's, it's the easiest color in the world to work with. All right, so next we're gonna go ahead and pop these in the degasser and uh, remove some air, and then we're gonna cook them up in the microwave and, uh, and go from there. Went ahead and put both cups uh, in the pro vac chamber and we're gonna get these babies nice and clear and um, we'll get back with you after they uh, after they come out 
and and again cook time is very important especially if you're dealing with a color that scorches really easy uh, for me I usually don't burn red very often um, you know I'll, I'll burn um, you know it's it's really June bug and any clear color that you have to be super careful not to heat it up too much at once or, or overheat it so for general colors I just like three minutes for one measuring cup and I think this is like a 1100 watt but uh, you know, if I do three minutes, I know I'm not going to overcook it, and it usually cooks it all the way. Boy, I tell you what, that's looking real red, and it's looking real shaddy. Okay, so I have both uh, both colors now heated up, and uh, we're just going to add a little anise scent uh, just for good measure. Now, anise is the stuff that smells kind of like licorice. Um, I forget what company uses uses it like really strong. Uh, it was like wave worms or something. Like uh, you know, you, you used to get those crazy wave worm Cinco's and they had all these cool uh, swirl colors and stuff. Well, they always smelled like licorice and that's what that is. And then of course, you know, you have your garlic, which is a uh, gambler lures thing. Uh, Charlie's, Charlie's worms actually use this like a cherry uh, flavored scent and uh, and then, of course, you know, you can't beat crawfish oil. But um, anyway, we're going to get these, um, we're going to try to get these at an even temperature. Again, one of the most important things is to get both plastics at the same temperature. So that one is like 374. This one's at 334. So we got quite a bit of work to do. We're going to go ahead and get them evened up. And the way you do that is you let one cool down and then you let the, and then you reheat the, the cooler one. So for example, this will not go back in the microwave, but the cooler one will. I'll try to bring them to a more even temperature. All right, I've got 367 on the black and 361 on the red. Okay, so that's about good. You know, that's, that's a little hotter than you normally want your plastic. But uh, you know, I definitely think, um, I definitely think we can get a good laminate out of that. So uh, we're gonna go ahead and shoot, but hold on first. Gotta, gotta make sure and enjoy yourself. Now we're ready to shoot. So let me adjust here. Always remember to wear your gloves, your heat gloves. So, we're gonna go ahead and do it. Draw up your plastic and bring it on over here. There we go. All right, mold number one. Looking good. Mold number two. Mold number three. Still feeling good. And number four. All right. Now what we just did is we did two molds of our big worm. Uh, we have the nine inch ribbon tail. We call it the candy cane. And then we have the seven inch uh, candy cane, um, which uh, is the, we call it the candy cane junior since it's smaller than the nine. So we have nine inch, seven inch, and um, just kind of looking here. Looks like we got a nice, uh, nice rich red and black color. So I think these are gonna turn out well. We're gonna let them cool for just a few minutes. You don't need that long uh, to let them cool. And um, I think these are gonna turn out well. Okay, moment of truth. We're gonna go ahead and uh, open up one of the big ones here. Oh yeah. Look at that. Got a nice, yeah, there's the black side. Here's the red. Tell you what, that didn't turn out too shabby. So, if you see here, the red kind of bled over a little bit. 
and um, sometimes that's just a difference of temperature you know when they're exactly the same temperature like within maybe like a five degree margin um, which you know we we kind of almost had that but whenever they're super 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 close they seem to laminate a little better but there is nothing wrong with that that right there i've also never made this color but um those turned out really nice all right let's look at the seven inch i like what i see already oh wow look at that this one laminated pretty much perfectly the black side is 100 percent black and then boom got the gorgeous red pearl side that one kind of got a little swirl effect going look at that check those out guys these turned out great we're gonna go ahead and lay them out and uh and then take a closer look all right guys here we go so this is what we just made um i haven't made any other ones uh since that uh since, since the first shoot but um here's what we just did and i think they turned out great i um probably next time i'll add a little more of the cherry red or, or some other type of red maybe just to make them a little more fire engine color um the the color now it's 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 a little orange um which which i actually don't mind in fact i think most red shads aren't 100 percent just straight fire engine red but uh this looks really great and uh and they smell good they smell like licorice so now the question is do you like red shad or blue shad you can do a blue pearl and and uh laminate it with black and get a really great effect but uh yeah this is red shad guys and um hey i can't wait to throw them thanks everybody for tuning in to today's uh popular colors bait making episode um i certainly enjoyed enjoyed doing these videos very much uh, it's fun to kind of show the process uh that, that i use with my company and um you know how i go about making a making a color because uh, a lot of what i do most of what i do is color matches um, you know, I have my standard colors that I do, but a lot of what I do is I create something just for somebody. And uh, hey, at least now I know how to make red shad. But um, hope you enjoyed today's episode. Let us know what you think. Shoot a comment down below. Also hit the like and subscribe button. Uh, you know, my your support helps me keep making videos. Like I said earlier, hope you enjoyed today's video. And, uh, and we'll see you next time on the World's Worst Fishing. Hey guys, thanks for watching the World's Worst Fishing. Hope you enjoyed today's episode. Please give us a comment down below, tell us what you think, and also hit that like and subscribe button.